Theoretical and practical questions of the non-invasive measurement of arterial stiffness. Part 8. Medical areas where the value of the measurement of the arterial function stiffness has been proven. Nephrology. The first longitudinal trials proving prognostic value of the arterial stiffness in end-stage renal disease. In the circulation in 1999, the first paper occurred about the impact of aortic stiffness on survival in end-stage renal disease published by Jacques Blachet and co-workers. They concluded that the increased aortic stiffness determined by measurement of aortic pulse velocity is a strong independent predictor of all cause and mainly cardiovascular mortality. Here he showed that the increase in aortic pulse velocity was going together with poorer overall survival. The lower was the pulse velocity, the better was the survival of the subject. Also in the circulation in 2001, Gerin and co-workers presented a paper about the impact of aortic stiffness attenuation on survival of patients in end-stage renal failure. They concluded that the intensity of the pulse wave velocity to decreased blood pressure is an independent predictor of mortality and the use of the AC inhibitors has a favorable effect on survival that is independent of blood pressure changes. In this nice figure of their paper, they showed the impact of aortic stiffness attenuation on the survival of patients in end-stage renal failure. On the left panel we can see that if the blood pressure reduction was properly made, it was going together with the pulse velocity reduction. And in this group, all of the patients survived. However, in the other group, despite of the nicely lowered blood pressure, the aortic pulse velocity did not decrease, so far increased. In this group, all of the patients died. This difference might reflect the fact that in this group, probably, the patients had very stiffened calcified aorta, and even the reduction in blood pressure would not result the reduction of the aortic pulse velocity. Arterial wave reflection and survival in end-stage renal failure was studied by London and co-workers and published in the Hypertension in 2001. The authors concluded that the effect of the arterial wave reflection is an independent predictor of all cause and cardiovascular mortality. Here we can see that the arterial wave reflection and survival in end-stage renal failure. We can see nicely that the high augmentation index predicts the poor cardiovascular survival. In the overall survival was the same. The higher was the AIX, the poorer was the cardiovascular survival. Prenier and co-workers studied the relationship and the prognostic significance in end-stage renal disease, the stiffness of the capacitive and conduit arteries. He concluded that the increased stiffness of capacitive arteries, like the aorta, is an independent strong predictor of cardiovascular morbid mortality However, the stiffness of the peripheral conduit arteries had no prognostic value at all. Here we can see the figure 
of this conclusion. We can see that the aortic pass velocity during the follow-up turned to be a very significant predictor of the cardiovascular survival. The higher was the aortic pass velocity, the poorer was the survival. But this relationship were not found in the brachial or in the femoral pass velocity. Thus, we can conclude that only the elastic aorta, the conduit artery, and not the brachial and the femoral artery carries prognostic information regarding the cardiovascular survival. Cardiology. Longitudinal population-based studies among apparently had the subjects were uh, studied and presented. In the circulation in 2006, a fundamental paper occurred from the Rotterdam study that the aortic pass velocity turned to be an independent predictor of coronary heart disease and stroke in apparently healthy subjects. The so-called Rotterdam study, also published in the same paper in the circulation, pointed out in general population the predictive value of the aortic pass velocity and this was better and more informative even the using the traditional cardiovascular factors including 24 hour mean arterial pressure. Arterial stiffness and cardiovascular events were studies on the basis of the Freminger Heart Study by Gary Mitchell and co-workers and published in the circulation in 2010. He concluded that the higher aortic stiffness assessed by aortic pass velocity is associated with increased risk for a first cardiovascular event. Aortic pass velocity improves risk prediction when added to standard risk factors and may represent a valuable biomarker of cardiovascular disease risk in the community. Hypertension, longitudinal prospective studies in hypertension. The European Society of Hypertension and European Society of Cardiology guidelines issued in 2013 contains the advocation of the central blood pressure measurement because it revealed that the central blood pressure measurement in hypertensive patients is predictive for future cardiovascular event and its prediction power is better than the brachial blood pressure. Furthermore, the central blood pressure measurement allows to judge the effect of the central hemodynamic, hemodynamic effect of different antihypertensive drugs. In this guideline, the aortic pass velocity measurement is also suggested because it has additive value beyond and above the traditional risk factors, including score on Framingham scoring to the cardiovascular risk and for the uh, survival and the cardiovascular events. Aortic stiffness turned to be independent predictor of primary coronary events in hypertensive subjects, studied by Pierre Buitri and co-workers. This paper was published in the Hypertension in 2002. And this study provided the first evidence in the longitudinal study that aortic stiffness is an independent predictor of primary coronary events in patients with essential hypertension. Regarding the central blood pressure, we have to refer to the strong heart study published by Mayor Roman in the hypertension in 2007. The conclusion was that the non-invasively determined central pass pressure is more strongly related to vascular hypertrophy, extent of atherosclerosis, and cardiovascular events than is brachial blood pressure. So this finding supported prospective examination of use of central pressure as a target, treatment target in the future trials. Also from the strong heart study, we received the threshold regarding the pass pressure, which would differentiate the lower and higher risk 
of the cardiovascular outcome. Mary Roman concluded that the central pulse pressure higher than 50 mercury predicts adverse cardiovascular disease outcome and may serve as a target in intervention strategies if confirmed in older populations and in prospective studies. Diabetes. Longitudinal prospective studies in diabetes. In this respect, we have to go back to the fundamental on and original paper published by Kennedy Crickshank about aortic pulse velocity and its relationship to mortality in diabetes and glucose intolerance. An integrated index of vascular function and he concluded yes, because the aortic pulse velocity turned to be a powerful independent predictor of mortality in both diabetes and glucose tolerance test population samples. In displacing systolic blood pressure as a prognostic factor, aortic pulse velocity is probably further along the causal pathway for arterial disease and may represent a useful integrated index of your vascular status and hence cardiovascular risk. So the diabetes indeed it's a vascular disease, thus the measurement of the aortic stiffness might play an extremely important role in judging the special cardiovascular risk of the patient. Obstetrics. It's strange that we can talk about the obstetrics using the pulse velocity and the augmentation index and the central blood pressure, but in a very large cohort uh, published in the ultrasound in obstetric and gynecology in 2012, the maternal hemodynamics at 11 to 13 weeks of gestation and risk of preeclampsia was studied by Ashma Khalil and Kipros Nicolaides. In conclusion, they said that compared with women who remain normotensive and women who develop preeclampsia have higher systolic blood pressure of the aorta and arterial stiffness, which is apparent from the first trimester of pregnancy. So, it was a strong evidence analyzing more than 6,800 subjects that uh, even in the early pregnancy, the increased systolic blood pressure of the aorta and aortic pulse velocity could be a prognostic marker for a later developing preeclampsia, which used to occur after the 20th week of the gestation. In this trial, arteriograph was used. Gynecology. We all know well that in the perimenopause and the menopause, the endothelial function declines and will be damaged due to the decreased nitric oxide synthesis among women. In this nice paper, Albu and co workers evaluated the arterial stiffness, carotid atherosclerosis, and left ventricular diastolic dysfunction in postmenopausal women. And they concluded that the postmenopausal menopausal women provides evidence that increased arterial stiffness, as measured by aortic pulse velocity, and not carotid intima media thickness, may be a marker or a risk factor for left ventricular diastolic dysfunction, independent of other risk factors. So, in this study, the aortic pulse velocity was also measured with oscillometric arterograph device. Pediatrics. The aortic pulse velocity measurement and the arterial stiffness measurement tend to be important even pediatrics. We know all well that the cardiovascular risk protection and prevention cannot be started early enough. Also, although we don't have a long longitudinal study from the childhood, but we all know well that the arterial damage can occur in a very young age. The very first trial, which described with the oscillometric arterograph device, the reference values of aortic pulse velocity in a very large healthy cohort 
population was aged between 3 and 18 years. And here we can see the LMS smoothed percentile curves from 3rd to 97th percentile for boys and girls between age of 3 to 18. It is worth mentioning that the pulse velocity does not increase until around the pubertas, either in the boys or in the girls, although you can see that these hormonal changes used to occur earlier in women than in boys. So this kind of description, longitudinal study, provided very interesting physiological considerations. Anesthesiology. We have a very nice paper from the British Journal of Anesthesiology that the pre-existing arterial stiffness can predict hypotension during introduction of anesthesia in the elderly. Indeed, measuring the aortic stiffness a day before of the operation, those who had high aortic pulse velocity among elderly subjects, they showed a sharp decrease in their blood pressure during the introduction of the anesthesia, which is carrying a danger in the anesthesiologic process. Sport medicine. We all know well that very often we can see sudden cardiac death among sporty athletes. For this reason, it is not interesting why the scientist interest turned to VAR to evaluate the arterial function parameters among sporty subjects. This paper speaks about the aortic augmentation index, which turned to be invasively associated with cardiospirotic fitness in men without known coronary artery disease. This kind of sport application of the arterial function under stiffness measurement is increasing rapidly, and further studies will clear and will clarify how we can use with the best efficacy the measurement of the arterial function and stiffness among athletes. So, concluding the said examples from different specialties, we can see that the aortic pulse velocity, the central blood pressure measurement, and the augmentation index measurement is not connected only to the cardiology. Very wide spectrum of the specialties could gain benefit from the use of the arterial stiffness measurement. Consequently, this kind of technology, which is Artograph, which provides a very easy, a very simple measurement and validated accuracy measurement for the arterial function parameters, might help to gain further evidence regarding the diverse application of the arterial stiffness measurement in different diseases, different conditions, and in different medical specialties. Thank you for your attention.